as you care for me in such a special way that's why i praise you i lift you up i magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise come on let's lift it up i love you 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 lord today because you care because you care for me in such, in such a special way that's, that's why, why i praise you i lift you up i lift you up and i magnify, and I magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, sing it to him. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care. Because you care for me. In such, in such a special way. That's why, that's why I praise you. I lift you. Come on, my heart, my heart, my mind, my mind, my soul, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for you me. You paid the price for me. Way back on Calvary. Way back on Calvary. That's why. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. I lift you up. And I magnify. And I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, let's do it again. Say, my heart, Lord. My heart, my mind, my, mind, my, soul, my soul belongs to you. You paid the, you price, paid the price for me way back, way back on Calvary. That's why That's I pray. If your heart is filled with praise, then bless his name. Come on, if your heart is filled with praise, come on and open up your mouth and bless his name. Come on, if your heart is filled with praise. 
Open up your mouth and bless him. Tell him how much you love him. I'll come on and give God praise all across the house on today. How many people love the Lord on today? We love him because he first loved us. So God, we come on this day letting you know that our heart is filled with praise. We've come into this place to give you the highest praise. We've come to give you all the glory and the honor. We love you, God. We're grateful for all that you have done for us. Thank you, God, for waking us up one more time. Thank you for good health, having us in our right mind. Thank you for this opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. You deserve all the glory. So we've come to magnify and glorify your holy name. Now bless us as we go into your word. Anoint me afresh to be a blessing unto those who have assembled, even those who are watching online. God, I yield to your spirit on this morning asking you to move in a powerful way use me for your glory save somebody heal somebody deliver somebody it's in jesus name we ask it all let the church say amen amen come on put those hands together Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Put those hands together all over the house. Amen. Amen. Turn with us, amen, in your word. Amen to the book of Acts. Book of Acts and the first chapter. So grateful, amen, to have with us this morning. Amen. Minister James West. Amen on the organ this morning. He's going to be blessing us for a few weeks here in September as we continue to be in prayer. Amen for God to send us musician. Amen. Minister of music. So the book of Acts. Amen. He comes as you heard this morning. Amen. He can sing. Yeah, got that anointing on his life. He's a songwriter, and so he comes with 50 years of experience. Yeah, he, he don't even look that old, right? <laughs> 50 years of experience, 40 years, amen, at the Antioch Church in Hampton, and so we're grateful that Amen. God has allowed him to come over and share with us. Come on, give him praise right now for the gift of Minister James West. Amen. The book of Acts and the first chapter starting at verse number one. Amen. I'm sharing from the New International Version, and therein we find these words. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. And on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father, wait for the gift my father promised, 
which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them, spread the word. Spread the word. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. I want to do some teaching today. Amen. Uh, as it relates to this particular scripture that we have pointed out on this morning. I want to talk from that title, Spread the Word. Jesus takes a moment to spend with his disciples after being resurrected from the dead. He comes to his disciples in order to provide them with some instruction before he returns to the right hand of the Father tells his disciples that he wants them to remain in Jerusalem, wants them to stay there because they're going to receive some power from on high, that God the Father will send down the Holy Spirit in order to equip them and empower them for the assignment that he has upon their lives. He wants them, amen, to be his witnesses. He wants them to spread the news or the word, amen, about the life, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He wants them to be witnesses, amen. They are qualified to be witnesses because they have observed what the Lord has done, amen, in the midst of his three years in ministry on the earth. They, they've witnessed him, observed him, amen, raise the dead, walk on water, feed, amen, a crowd of 5,000. They have observed him uh, make the lame walk, open uh, the eyes of the blind. They, they have been there in order to notice and witness what the Lord has done in the midst of his ministry. And so he wants them, amen, to go forth in order to enlarge and expand the church. This is the Lord's vision. He's down, amen, if you will, to a remnant, amen, and he wants these apostles to serve as leaders in order to go forth, amen, to draw, point other people Amen to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is asking us, amen, uh, or rather commanding each of us in this day and time, amen, to be witnesses, yeah, of 
Jesus Christ. Because just like these apostles, we have witnessed what the Lord has done in our lives. Over time, we have observed, amen, what the Lord has done with us and for us. We've been sick and we've witnessed the Lord heal our bodies. Amen. We've been in situations where we needed Jehovah Jireh and the Lord showed up and supplied our every need. We've been in storms, but the Lord has spoke to the storms for us to tell the storm, peace be still. We've been in jams and in binds, and how many people know the Lord has brought you out of some jams in your life. We can all testify, amen, and talk about what the Lord has done for us. And the Lord said, I don't want y'all to keep that to yourself. I want you to go out and spread the word, share it with somebody else so that others may come to know, amen, about the awesome power of our God. He, he's here with his disciples in Jerusalem and he says, I want y'all to stay in Jerusalem. Stay in this particular spot. Amen. You have to understand that Jerusalem at this particular time is a hostile environment for the disciples. Amen. People are on the lookout for these followers of Jesus Christ. Remember, they've already hung the Lord. Amen. Right there on the cross on a hill called Calvary. And they're looking for people, amen, who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ. Isn't it interesting, y'all, that sometimes the Lord Lord will ask you or rather tell you to stay somewhere, amen, that you don't want to be. Oh, my God. It, isn't it interesting how you, you want to leave a job, but the Lord tells you to stay on the job? Isn't it interesting how the Lord will have you to stay in a place, ask you to stay put in a place where it's bringing trauma, amen, upon your life. It's unhealthy and it's toxic, amen, but the Lord asks you to remain in that particular spot. Maybe it's a marriage. Maybe you went to the Lord about the marriage, but the Lord, amen, told you to remain in that place because it was in that place, watch this, where the Lord would equip you and empower you to become Come all that God has called you to be. That's why you got to stay sometimes even when you want to leave because you might miss out on what the Lord wants to do in your life that will help you, amen, to elevate beyond where you are. Is there anybody here today that's grateful that you stayed put, amen, that you didn't leave because that was the place where God began to shape you and mold you. That's the place where God worked on you to become who the person you are on today. Maybe you've been praying to the Lord about leaving a place, but the Lord sent you here on this morning to say, no, I need you to stay put. I know, amen, they mistreating you. I know things aren't well. I know it's rough for you right now, but I'm working on you to prepare you for the place where I'm trying to take you and if you don't stay you're gonna miss out on the anointing that you need amen for the place that I've already set apart for your life and so he says I need y'all to be my witnesses I need y'all in, uh, in other words, I need y'all to evangelize. Yeah, that's what the Lord has called the church to do. 
a amen, to evangelize, to spread the word, a amen, to be his witnesses. And I love how, how, how the Lord uh, puts it. He says, I need y'all to stay in Jerusalem because you're going to receive some power from on high. And, and watch the wording that he used. He said, and you will be my witnesses. Don't, don't miss that. He didn't say you might be my witnesses. He said you will be my witnesses. Here's the first thing that I need you to write down on today. Uh, evangelism or spreading the word, uh, it's not uh, an option. Instead, it's an obligation. Yeah, it's an obligation instead of an option. If, if, if you claim to be a believer, if you claim to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, the Lord is letting you know on this morning that it's not an option, amen, for you, amen, to spread the word. He says it's an obligation. Mm. He said you don't have a choice in this. Oh, yeah. After all that he's done in your life, the Lord said you have a responsibility on your life. Amen. To go out and tell others what I have done in your life. If God has healed you, you have a calling and a duty and a responsibility to go out and testify to somebody that doesn't know him about how the Lord was Jehovah Rophi in your life. If the Lord opened some doors for you, you don't have a choice. The Lord said, you will be my witnesses. I am uh, requiring you to go out and tell people how I supplied your need, how I tried your tears, how I gave you peace when you were about to lose your mind, how I delivered you from the drug. Do I have any witnesses up in here? Do I have any people in here that can say I have some stories to tell about how the Lord has blessed my life and I'm not trying to keep it to myself. Lord, I'm willing to go out and tell somebody about how good you've been to me. You have an obligation on your life. This ain't a choice. The Lord said, after all that I've done for you, you can't be quiet. You can't be silent. You can't zip your lips. You've got to go out and testify about how good I've been to you. He said, I want you to be my witnesses. I saved you for a reason. Oh, that's a good witness right there. When, when you know that if it wasn't for the Lord, you, you would have been dead somewhere. You, you would have been somewhere strung out on truck. You would have OD'd a long time ago. How many of y'all are just satisfied and happy that the Lord stopped by one day and he saved your soul? He turned your life around. Somebody ought to be willing to testify. Oh, can I get a witness up in here? How many people are grateful that the Lord saved you? You remember what you were doing before the Lord saved you? You remember where you were going before the Lord saved you? You ought to be able to testify that the Lord changed my life. Anybody grateful that he changed your life? Anybody grateful that he picked you up and he turned you around? You ought to testify. 
And nobody should have to twist your arm or convince you to go out and tell about what the Lord has done for you. Oh, that's how you grow the church. He said, I need y'all to go out and be my witnesses. I didn't save y'all for nothing. I didn't feed the crowd of 5,000 for I didn't walk on water for nothing. I did it to go out and get somebody else to come to know the Lord for themselves. It's an obligation. And not an option. Oh my God. I, I, I want you. Amen. To make it your mission. A amen. From this day forth. Amen. To go out. And tell some unbeliever. What the Lord has done for you. See we good with telling church folk. But they already saved. The Lord said, I'm trying to expand the church. I'm trying to enlarge. I'm trying to bring some more people into the kingdom. And so I need you to go out and get some unbeliever and testify to them about how good I am. Uh, he said, it's, it's an obligation. He said, you will be my witnesses. Oh, my God. Here, here's the next thing about spreading the word. Um, you have to proceed in proximity. Look, look at the text. Look, look at the text in verse number eight. Um, he, he said, uh, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. Don't, don't miss that. You, you will be my witnesses in, in, in Jerusalem, Judea, uh, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Look, look at it. Um, but, but, but before you get to the ends of the earth, <laughs> before you get to Samaria and Judea, I need you to start right here in Jerusalem. Oh, my God. In other words, I need you to start right there around you. Uh, uh, I, I don't need you to go out to Samaria right now. I don't need you to go to the ends of the earth. Because you got some people right there around you. Oh, my God. Don't, don't miss that. This, this is what the Lord, I've already placed some people right there near you <laughs> where you can go and testify. There, there are some people right there in your family. Oh, y'all know who I'm talking about. That you can go and tell your story to. They ain't saved. They don't come to church. But, but I worked a miracle in your life so you can serve as evidence and as proof so they'll come to know about what I'm able to do and they'll be able to understand that if I did it for you, I can do it for them. See, see, he, he, he wants you to, to, to testify to people around you because those are the people you got influence over. Mm. Uh. Right there in your family. Right there on your job. Oh, my God. You, you so busy talking about everything else. Why, why don't you testify about what I've done in your life? Yeah, you, you talk about everything else on the job, but, but you ain't tell them how I made a way for you. And, and you haven't told them how I, I woke you up in the morning. Uh, when, when you felt like giving up, I, I gave you strength uh, to make it through some rough seasons. And you ain't told nobody about it. Yeah. 
Tell them how I got you off the drugs. Tell them how I told fear it had to go. You were stressed out, but I kept you in your right mind. Tell somebody. How many times have I shown up for you? How many times have I delivered you? You you talk about everything else. Open your mouth and testify about how good I've been to you. He said, I want you to start in Jerusalem. Uh, right there in proximity. You got some people that don't know about me. That's the reason why I bless you the way I bless you. So you can serve as evidence and as proof of what I'm able. How many people know that you serve as evidence, as proof at what the Lord can do in somebody's life? I need some heel folk to stand to their feet. I, I, I need some people in here where God delivered you from some storm, where God made a bridge over troubled water, where God, I need some testifiers. Hasn't he been good to you? Hasn't the Lord blessed you? Hasn't the Lord made ways for you? Hasn't the Lord provided for you? Tell somebody around you. So that's how I grow the church. Y'all keeping your mouth shut. He, he said, you got to open your mouth and share the word. Spread it everywhere. Tell others about me. He said, start in Jerusalem. And, and then, and then he, here, here's the next thing. He says, expand over time. He said, you will be my witnesses. He said, I've already given you power from on high to equip you and empower you to go out there and testify. Oh, somebody ought to testify. Oh, yeah, about how awesome God has been. Yeah, yeah. Some of y'all are on jobs you ain't even qualified for. You, you ought to testify. You, 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 you living in houses where, guess what? The Lord worked it out for you. You, you ain't have the credit for that. You, you ain't have the money for that. But somehow, some way, the Lord worked it out for you. Hmm. He, he said, expand. Over time, I need you to start in Jerusalem. But, but look at it. Then, then I need you to go to Judea. Oh, I wish I had a map because right after Jerusalem is Judea. Uh, and right after Judea is Samaria. <laughs> and right after Samaria are the ends of the earth. Oh, my God. Yeah, just, just look at how the Lord has expanded oh, over time. Yeah, you, you, you do know the gospel didn't start in America. But somehow, someway, he had some testifiers. <laughs> some witnesses. Who, who eventually, amen, cross oceans and seas. That's how good God had been to them. They, they said, we can't keep this to ourselves. We got to tell other people. And so, amen, they got in ships and in boats and they were able to cross seas and come through oceans in order to spread the good news. And we can't even get off 30th Street. God 
I said, what are you doing? I call you to be witnesses. I call you to go out and testify and to expand over time. Hmm. Yeah. So, so now you just can't stop with family. Huh. You, you got to expand over time. Don't, don't miss it. Because you got to keep on telling <laughs> oh, about what the Lord has done for you. You, you want to you wanna grow the church? You want to expand God's reach? You, you got to be able to expand and enlarge your territory over time. Yeah, not for God to just enlarge your territory. No, but, but we're trying to expand and we're trying to reach beyond where we are so that we can enlarge his kingdom. Oh, my God. He said you got to expand oh, over time. I need you to start in Jerusalem. Then I need you to go to Judea and, and watch this. Don't you go to Samaria until you've completed your work in Judea. Oh, my God. Don't you go to Samaria until you finish your work right there where you are. And don't you dare go global when you have neglected being local. How you going to go global and you don't take care of the folk in your own neighborhood? How you going overseas and you don't take care of the people in your city? Oh, that's what trips me out about some churches. They, they want to go global and go overseas and they neglect the very folk in their city. We got hungry folk right here in Newport News. We got homeless folk right here in Hampton. Build them some houses. Feed them during the week. You want to save people in Africa? We need some people to save some folk right here in Virginia. We need to send some folk down there to Georgia where a youngster opened fire in a school. We need. But we want to go to Africa and we want to go to Indonesia. We need to be right here in the United States of a. That the problem with us is that we don't submit to strategy. We want to go global and neglect being local. Uh, we want to go overseas, but we don't want to save nobody right here in the city. He said, I need you to adhere to the arrangement that I've already made. I need you to expand over time. Providence, we got to expand. Because we got a remnant just like the church here in the text. The book of Acts is 120 people. Represent the church and the Lord said we got to expand our reach. We come out of pandemic and, and y'all we're working with a remnant as it relates to the church. And the Lord said we need to enlarge our territory. We need to go out and testify to others to draw others to Christ. But we got to start in Jerusalem. Yeah, and then we expand over time. Oh, my God. 
Yeah, you, you know how you got saved? Because somebody testified. Yeah, yeah. You, you, know how, you know how your life turned around? Because somebody served as a witness. Yeah, yeah. Because God was so good to grandmama that grandmama drug you to church. Oh, y'all remember them days when, 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 when mama and daddy, guess what? You ain't want to go to church, but they drag your behind right out the bed. But aren't you glad they drag you? You ain't like it then. But how many people can say, I'm glad they dragged me? That's how we got saved. Somebody right there in the house knew about how good God had been to them and said, you ain't missing out on this. Grandmama prayed for you while you were out in the streets because she didn't want you to miss out. Sometimes you ought to thank God for a praying grandmama and a praying deacon that prayed your behind right into the church. He, he says, it's not an option. You ain't got a choice. He said, this is an obligation. He, he said, I save you. I'm expecting you to go out there and be my witness. Uh, and he said, you got to proceed in, in proximity. Start right there in Jerusalem. Then he says, expand over time. Here's the last thing. He says, uh, you have to leave your comfort zone. Oh, I know you don't like that. Because we like to stay comfortable. So I want you to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea. In Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Oh, remember these apostles. Yeah, for the most part, they they from right there in the area. <laughs> That's all they know. That's all they're familiar with. And so they've become attached over time just to that area. Oh. Oh, I, 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 I love it because at, at this present time, y'all, they are locked up in a house. I told you people are looking for them. Oh, they they, they want to kill them because they are followers of Jesus Christ. And, and, and the Lord had come and, and he had turned things upside down. Yeah, he made the establishment upset. And they're trying to make sure that this word doesn't go forth any longer. Uh, and so they're locked up in a house uh, because the truth of the matter is they're scared. Because uh, uh, the truth of the matter is um, even though we are saved, guess what? At some point in time, we get scared. We get stressed about some stuff. I know you don't want to admit it because you think admitting it will make you come across as weak. But even Jesus got scared. You remember right there in the Garden of Gethsemane, it, it said he was sweating and the sweat fell down from him like drops of blood. Oh. Oh. Because he knew what was coming. Oh. And the disciples know if they leave that house, they know what they might encounter. <laughs> and so the Lord said, I need you to be my witnesses. Oh, my God. 
I know what's awaiting you on the outside, but I need you to trust me that I'm going to be your refuge and your strength. That I'm going to protect you from danger seen and unseen. And, and so even though you haven't gotten attached to this house, even though you've gotten comfortable in this place, I need you to leave where you are in order to be my witnesses. Oh, my God. Huh. I've already equipped you. Yeah, the Holy Spirit is coming to empower you. I need y'all to get this because the word eventually made it around. Don't y'all read this Bible when you go to the book of Romans? Yeah, and, and the book of Philippians and Thessalonica. Oh, all these churches were started outside of Jerusalem by apostles, amen, because they were willing to get out of their comfort zone. Uh, they, they were willing to leave the place of familiarity. Oh, my God. See, some of us want things to be pleasant all the time. Yeah, we want to feel safe. Yeah, and secure. But it gets to the point where, guess what? Where, where the enemy will prevent you from going to the places that God has destined for you. See, see, when you decide to settle, that's when you become stagnant and complacent. Some of us have become stagnant and complacent and we're missing out on our destiny because we're trying to stay comfortable. Mm. Yeah, but every now and then you got to be like Peter and be willing to get out of the boat. Do I have some water walkers in here? Do I have some people who are willing to trust God? Don't stay in the boat like the other disciples. God is looking for somebody who's willing to get out of the boat. To walk on some water. Oh my God. I, I need somebody who's willing to trust God. Oh, oh. How many people know that you can trust God? How many people know that the Lord is faithful? That if you step out, guess what? He will step in and show up and show out. Do I have a witness in this place? How many people have stepped out for the Lord and the Lord bless your life and the Lord worked some things out for you and the Lord got the glory out of your life? We need some we people who are willing to step out. And that's what Jesus did. He was willing to leave. Gethsemane. Uh, yeah, and go to that hill called Calvary. <laughs> he was willing to get out of his comfort zone. Oh, my God. Take God at his word. He said, if you destroy this temple, he said, just give me three days and I'll rise again. So he went to the cross. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. And for me, he died. Somebody said he died all day Friday. And all day Saturday. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power won't God do it for you I said won't God work it out for you won't God make a way for you providence 
The Lord said, we got to spread the word. He says, there's so much evil in this world that people need to hear about the good news of Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. We, we got we to gotta spread the news, right? We got to be willing to testify, serve as witnesses about the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, so here's what I, I need you to do. I need you to come up with a strategy. I need you to come up with a strategy. This is our assignment. He says, start right where you are. How many people in your family you need to testify to? I need you to write their names down. I need you to be in prayer to God. Yeah, that, that, that God will set up an opportunity where you can serve as a witness to him. Yeah, yeah, because you got some people right there in your family that need to know about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I see you got your phone out right now. Yeah, put them in. I'm serious. This is our assignment. You, 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 you got some people in your family on drugs. They need to hear about the goodness. You, you got some people right now in your family that are going through something. And they need your witness in order for their lives to turn around. So right there in your family. Uh-huh. Start in Jerusalem. And, and then, and then guess what? God has set you right there on that job. You got some people on the job that, that are going through something. You already know their name. Be in prayer for them. Ask God to set up an opportunity for you to serve as a witness. Yeah, we're going to start right there in Jerusalem. And then we're going to expand over time because somebody got to testify. <laughs> God said, you can't keep this to yourself. He said, you will be my witnesses. Yeah, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. That's what the Lord has called the church to do. That's, that's one of our assignments, y'all. Yeah, we come in here to worship. We come in here to praise. We come in here for ministry, yeah, to serve. But, but we've also been called to serve as witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as pastor, that's what I'm calling us to do here at PBC. Write down those names right there in your family. Be in prayer for them. Ask God to set up an opportunity. Yeah, for you to serve as a witness. Yeah, invite them to church. Bring them to church. Yeah, and allow the Lord to work on them while you're praying for them, while you're steady testifying. Pray for that person on the job. Yeah, somebody already been coming to you with their issues because they know you're saved they they see the anointing that's on your life ask ask the lord to give you the words to speak to them to minister to them so that they might come to know jesus christ as their lord and as their savior that's our assignment there may be somebody here you don't know jesus christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Guess what? You have all these witnesses here on today. Come on, raise your hand if you're a witness of the goodness of Jesus Christ. You got all these witnesses, people who can testify about the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ, about how he provided for them, how he healed them, 
how he restored them, how he helped them to bounce back, recover, how he turned their life around. And so if you're here on this morning, you are not saved. If you're not saved, we want you to be saved because we want you to one day serve as a witness. We want you to be able to testify. We want you to experience what we've already experienced, that the Lord our God is good. <laughs> yeah, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures throughout all generations. We serve a healing God. We serve a providing God. We serve a delivering God. We serve an awesome God. We serve a faithful God. If you're here on this morning unsaved, we want you to walk out right now to the greatest blessing of your life. If you're watching online and you're unsaved, we want you to be saved. If this message, amen, has ministered unto you, we want you to go to the inbox right there on the page. Amen. Give us your name. Give us your number. And we'll be in touch with you real soon. Maybe you're looking for a church home. If that's you, you can come at this time. We would be honored to have you as a member of this branch of Zion, of PBC. If you're here looking for a church home, you can come at this time. Join this ministry. If you're watching online, same thing applies. If you want to be a member, amen, reach out to us right there on the page. Go to the inbox. Amen. Give us your name. Give us your number. Amen. We'll reach out to you real soon. Unsaved or looking for a church home. Unsaved or looking for a church home. Amen. If everybody's saved, everybody's connected, come on, Providence. Let's give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated. In the presence of our God. Amen. We want to be in prayer for persons who stand in need of prayer. Amen. Good to have Reverend Molden with us in worship on this morning. As he continues to recover. Amen. We want to continue to lift him up to the Lord in prayer. Continue to lift up trustee O.H. Smith. Amen. Continue to be in prayer for him. He's in worship with us. As well, Sister Rosetta Randall, Sister Edna Davis, Sister Moselle Williams, Sister Nellie Jordan, uh, Randy Lee's mother, amen. Want to be in prayer for Deaconess Caldwell's daughter. Those names that are listed on our bulletin, amen. We want to continue to intercede for them as well. Amen. Deacon is coming at this time to lead us in this prayer of intercession. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, it's once again, Lord God, we bow down before you. Thanking you, Lord, for another day. Father God, as we bow our heads, Lord God, we realize that you've been so good to us, Lord. Father God, you have blessed us and brought us a mighty long way. Amen. Father God, when we was in trouble, Lord God, you brought us out. Lord God, when we were hungry, you fed us, Lord God. Father God, you've been there for us through the tough times, Lord God, and we thank you. You've been just that good, Lord. Father God, as we pray, Lord God, we ask that you would forgive us of all of our sins. Cleanse us, Lord, of all unrighteousness. Continue, Lord God, to create in us a clean and pure heart, a heart that's acceptable in thine sight. And God, we pray that you will continue to mold us, Lord, and shape us into the individuals you want us to be. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for the many, many blessings. Lord God, we thank you for delivering us from dangers seen and dangers unseen. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, just for being God in our lives. Now, Lord God, as we intercede, Lord God, we intercede on the behalf of those who have lost loved ones, Lord God. Father God, we ask that you will comfort them, Lord God, as you only know how. Lord God, meet every need, Lord God, that they may stand in need of. 
Father God, where they are sick, Lord God, we ask that you will touch, heal, and deliver. For you are Jehovah Rophi, Lord God, the God that healeth thee. Father God, we just pray for those, Lord God, who are going through rough and tough times right now. Lord God, let them know, Lord God, that in your word, you said that you would never leave them nor forsake them. And many are the afflictions of the righteous, but you would deliver them out of them all. Yes. So God, we just thank you for your word, Lord God, that gives us strength, that gives us power, Lord God. Well, Heavenly Father, we, we pray for those who don't know you in the pardon of their sins. In this place right now, Lord God, we pray that the word that came forth, Lord God, will touch your heart, touch their hearts. And Lord, that they will come asking what must they do to be saved. And Lord, even in the uttermost parts of the earth, Lord God, we pray that your word will flow from heart to heart and breast to breast. And those, Lord God, who don't know you will surrender their lives unto you. So God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you all honor and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, give God praise right where you are. Amen. Amen. Married couples, married couples, engaged couples, we're calling you out. It's time to restart our ministries. We took a break for the summer. So on this coming Amen Tuesday at 7 o'clock via Zoom, that information is right there. In the bulletin, we're asking all married couples, all engaged couples, amen, to meet with us on this coming Tuesday at 7 a.m. Amen. We got some cards for you, amen, that's going to be handed out. If you haven't received one, we'll get one to you. But we want you to meet us, amen, on this Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Then we're kicking back off with our Bible study, amen, on this coming Wednesday, amen, at 7 o'clock, uh, Facebook Live, YouTube, amen. I want you, amen, to join us on this coming Wednesday. We got a new series, amen, interesting series, amen. We're going to be talking about lessons from an ant. Ah, lessons from an ant. The ant is going to teach us some things. Uh, it's going to totally amaze you. And so I'm asking you, amen, to meet us. Some of y'all looking at me crazy. <laughs> Pastor, what I'm going to learn from an ant, you're going to be amazed at what the Lord has provided unto the pastor. And so I'm asking you to meet me, to find out, invite somebody to come and share with us, amen, on this coming Wednesday at, amen, 7 o'clock on Facebook Live and Zoom. Amen? Amen. Go, go ahead, write this scripture down. Proverbs chapter 6, amen, verses 6 and 7. Yeah, lessons from an ant. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. I'm telling you. Meet us Wednesday, 7 o'clock, Facebook Live, YouTube. And then on Thursday, amen, our nursing program is back in play. Amen. And so at this particular time, y'all, we're dealing with cancer. Amen. So you ought to come out Amen. And find out some vital information regarding cancer, how you can prevent it. Amen. What things you can do. Amen. As far as getting tested. Amen. Treating it. And so this coming Thursday at six o'clock, right over in the Genesis Hall. Amen. From six o'clock until until uh, 730. Amen. Amen. Y'all say amen to me. Amen, amen, amen. At this time, we're going to have an announcement, amen, coming from our Capital Improvement, amen, committee, amen. We were out there yesterday, uh, golf tournament, Sheriff uh, Karen Bowden had her annual golf tournament at the Hamptons where we're going to have our golf tournament. They were giving us some advice, some instructions on how we are 
to go forth when we have ours. And so we were grateful for that opportunity on yesterday. Come on, let's give God praise for Deaconess Haspel as she comes to share with us. Good morning. today you can't do anything but go tell somebody and step it up all in one and so what we're uh, coming before you this morning as he mentioned on behalf of our capital campaign uh, committee in reference to our um, 60th church anniversary um, golf tournament and we need everybody to participate when I say participate, no, I don't mean you have to get your golf club and you got to come out there and play golf. But if you do, that's all good, too, because we can use you to do that as well. But we have um, just three things to remind you of, and everybody can play a part. And when I say everybody, everybody can play a part. So those of you who you know that you used to be a sponsor of Walk for Education, so this year you didn't walk. We didn't walk, but guess what? We need you to step it up because you can still be a sponsor for our golf tournament. And so you can um, make sure that those funds, that those of you who you were sponsors in the past, you can be a sponsor because still a portion of those proceeds will go toward our scholarship funds for our students and for the students in the community. So that's one way you can participate. The other way that you can participate is that we have our cash raffle, and those tickets are going fast. We only have a few tickets left, and they're only $5, and so you can pick up a ticket today. And for those of you who have uh, picked up a book um, to uh, purchase or either to sell, we appreciate that. And so those um, funds that we need to um, have back by the fourth Sunday in September, so if you want to start getting yourself ready and calling your family up and say, come on now, y'all, let's get the ticket straight. So if you can do that by the fourth Sunday, we would appreciate that as well. Now, if you say, I don't golf, I don't do tickets, I don't sponsor, but everybody in here eats, okay? Everybody. So we have lunch tickets available. You can come out and you can get your lunch. Come on out and be at the golf court to support the golfers when they come in. Lunch will be provided. Tickets are only $15. They're on sale now. You will get a full meal plus your dessert. You will get all of that on that um, Saturday, October the 5th. Lunch tickets are available. Tell your family, tell your friends, come on out and support us. You ought to be excited. And don't say, they got a golf tournament. Uh-uh, we got a golf tournament. Everybody, all of us, PBC, we have a golf tournament, and we need you to get excited. So when somebody else say, oh, y'all having a golf tournament? No, uh-uh, we having a golf tournament. Yes, we are, and we're excited. You need to start grinning as soon as somebody mentioned the word golf, that golf tournament. I'm smiling because we're excited, and we want to step it up this year, and we want to do the very best that we can to know that we're making a difference in our community, and the word spreads, PBC, we're all about spreading the word of God. We can have a little fun doing it. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Amen. Thank you so much, Deaconess Hayspell. Amen. We were so encouraged on yesterday going out there. Amen. To that golf tournament that Sheriff Bowden had. Amen. They had a number of people out there. Uh, I want to say they had at least 20, amen, teams out there. And the food was just great. Amen. I ate me a plate. Amen. Went home. Amen. Watched a little bit of game. Fell asleep. Amen. But it was good. And so, Pastor, want to encourage each and every one of you, as Deaconess Hayspell pointed out, to participate in some kind of way. Stop by. Amen. Get a lunch ticket. 
Amen. Join us on that Saturday for lunch. Amen. At our first, amen, our first golf tournament. As she pointed out, amen, proceeds, some of the proceeds will go to our scholarship ministry. At the end of the day, we're trying to raise money, funds for, amen, our renovation. And so we got to step up. We got to step out. We have to do all that we can in order to bring the vision to pass. Amen. 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 On next Sunday, we're going to have a food drive. That's our food drive that we typically have once a quarter. And so it's September. So we're asking you to bring in non-perishable items on next Sunday for our food drive. We give that food. Amen. For the most part to the food pantry. Amen. Here in Newport News. And so we want everybody uh, to bring in items on next Sunday for that food drive. Amen? Amen. Are there any visitors with us on today? Would you please stand? If you're visiting with us, you're not a member of Providence, please stand. Amen. So grateful. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Remain standing for us. We thank God. We bless God for your presence with us on today. Amen. We hope that you have been blessed in some way on this morning. We thank you for taking the time out to come out and worship with us on this Sunday. We want to encourage you to come back and see us real soon to show you how grateful, thankful we are to have you with us on today. Come on, Providence. Amen. Let's stand. Let's give God praise for all of our visitors on this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't forget we have voters registration. Amen. We want to get as many people registered to vote as possible. And so voters registration right out to my right. Amen. After worship, we need you to get to that table, register to vote, register to vote. Amen. So that we can make sure, amen, we are accounted for uh, this coming election. Amen. Amen. It's giving time. It's giving time in the house of the Lord. We've come to give unto the Lord on this morning. We want to bring our tithe. We want to bring our offering. Amen. We want to give unto the Lord. Amen. He says, give and I'll fill up your barns. I'll have your vats overflowing with new wine. Give, he says, and I'll give it back to you. It'll be pressed down. It'll be shaken together. It'll be running over back in good measure. He said, I'll open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing you don't have enough room to receive. How many people know he is Jehovah Jireh? our provider. He supplies our every need. If you don't have cash, if you don't have check, you can give. Amen. Using your credit or your debit card. Amen. You can go to givelify.com. Go to givelify.com. Amen. Look for Providence Baptist Church. Amen. 1331 30th Street, Newport News, Virginia. You can give online as we speak. If you're watching from home, amen, you can join, amen, this giving opportunity on this morning. You can use the Cash App, amen, put in the dollar sign, PBC News Live. Once again, PBC News Live, amen. We want to give, we want to be obedient unto the Lord so that we can do greater works for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Deacon is coming at this time to give us our offertory prayer. All right, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who you gave to us to die for our sins. And Father God, as we bring our tithes and offerings today, Father God, we want to thank you for your protection and providing for us, Father God. Father God, let these tithes and offerings be a blessing to your sight and use for your kingdom and glory. Amen. 
Amen. How many people been blessed on today? Amen. We thank God for your presence on this morning. PBC, we want to spread the word. We want to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. We want you to have a blessed week, have a safe week. And we look forward to meeting with you on Tuesday, married couples, engaged couples, Wednesday for Bible study, nursing program on Thursday. Look at what the Lord is doing in our midst. Don't forget about the food drive on Sunday. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to him who presents us faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy to the only wise and true God, the glory, majesty, dominion, and power. May God bless you in the city. May he bless you in the field. May he bless your going out and your coming in both now and forevermore. Let the church say amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Wave at me.